Welcome to Squire Cornice's spear class. Um, going to cover the basics of how to stand, how to hold your spear, how to stand around your teammates on a line, throw some shots, and hopefully not get killed. Um, so first we're going to start with stance, which plays into footwork. Footwork's the basis for everything. You've been told that forever and ever and ever your whole career. But um, things work a little differently with a spear. Um, when you run sword and board, normally your uh, sword hand and your sword foot are out forward if you're offensively. It's kind of backwards with spear because your right hand and your right foot for right-handed stance is going to be behind. You'll still be in line, um, but your right foot and your right hand will be back because all your control and power comes with your dominant hand normally. So if you're going left hand, it would be opposite, a left hand, a left foot backwards. Um, the same way, um, there's a, depending on how you're holding your uh, spear, you'll typically have a wider foot gap than you would with sword and board or any other stance, because you're gonna, you want more power and more structure into your movements when you're moving around with your spear. So I keep my feet wider apart, um, and my knees a little bit more bent, a little lower to the ground. Uh, it just helps with your center balance, you're throwing shots, because a lot of times you're moving a lot more to get a little more range, a little further. You can throw things more straight up, but you lose a lot of your ability doing that. Um, I guess we move straight into your different grips, because those play off of how you stand. And after that, we'll move into how to stand around people, because that's important. Um, so your different grips? Your different grips. So okay. you got um, both hands on top, kind of like bicycle grip, is your like your first <laughs> hand grip most people are taught. Um, you can move your hands up and around your spear for different ranges. Uh, this, this is your real basic. All your power will come here. If you're throwing good, stable, sturdy shots, this is how you're going to do them. You double much easier like this. You can slide through. Um, your other one, this one I use for more accuracy, is your front hand on top, uh, underneath, and your back hand on top. And this allows you to cool cue and be more accurate, kind of your sniping stance. Um, you have to be careful when you're doing this because it's not as stable as this. This is a lot easier to knock out of your hand. If someone was to parry your spear, it blows out of your hand much easier with this hand grip than this one. It's a lot harder for someone to knock these out of your hand. Um, also, um, the tendency when you have this, the spear shots will tend to go up. So when you're doing this one, I like to keep my back hand higher and my front hand lower. That way you can you raise the whole spear to do it. Now with all of these grips, you want to avoid being way out overextended. You also don't want to be curled over top of your spear. Yeah. Um, so you'll keep your spear. Yeah. Is it better to be like this or like this? Um, this. Again, you binding yourself up a little more. I like to keep it in between. You don't want to be too far rolled down. You don't want to be too far rolled up. You can, if you're going for higher shots, roll up to give yourself a little bit more height. Um, but typically, I like to be somewhere in the middle. And you can vary. Um, there's another variation, which is ice pick. And you use this a lot when you're like on the edge of a like line or a flank or working around an obstacle, because you use it to get a lot of power and go around your shieldman and get you with the board over here with us. This will lead us right into how to stand with a um, shieldman. Sorry for being disrupted. No, you're fine. Ask questions. It gives me some more points. So stand here, face the camera. So the one example is I'll stand behind her and use her as total cover. She can block all my shots, but I can shoot around ice pick. And the very, this is another very stable because my front hand is on top. You can't, I can have all the power in the world to hold on to my spear. Just pull you through, double. So I can always step back. So this is, uh, I think Sir Techno calls this the ice pick um, stance. Um, a lot of people, uh, spear users, only fight um, either right-handed or left-handed. Um, I encourage you to get comfortable swapping hands, working both right-handed, thank you. Um, both right-handed and left-handed. So get used to swapping up on lines, working around different short shieldmen, because 
when I'm fighting next to my boardman, I don't want to put my spear in between them and myself because one, they're going to get in the way of my shots. I'm going to hit them with my spear. We're just going to be in each other's way. If I stick myself closer to my boardman and the spear on the outside, then I can get closer and not interfere as much. My spear is working this side. If I need to shoot on this side, then I can step further this way and shoot this way. Or I can swap hands and come on this side. We have all this over here. tips for someone trying to learn how to fight on their not dominant side um, to make it easier at first if you're learning to swap non-dominant um, this is harder for me because I'm ambidextrous by nature um, I, I do I try and swap up all my fighting but um you really just need to be in the mindset of working both sides like I said it's the norm for spear fighters to not um, swap or weapon match and stuff like that. That's really just something you have to work on. A lot of, like Talon, for example, you are right-handed by, but when you started learning sword and board, you specifically went left-handed because lefties have an advantage over right-handed fighters in the sport. Just being able to weapon match is super valuable in every fighting style. Um, start up with your basics. Just like I said, this is your stable starting off. Get used to throwing your shots, um, working through the different stances. It, it's really just going to take practice training yourself to be able to do both sides. As someone who's right-handed, when I learned spear, I learned left-handed spear. Um, and basically, I just tried to like aim more with my right hand. people are going to want to rush you. Your main advantage when you're fighting um, is that you can hit people from almost eight feet away. Um, in most situations, there are shorter spears, um, but your range over any other fighter is your advantage, um, essentially. So being able to keep people at range is very important. Um, you see a lot of people, if they get armed as a spear fighter, they'll either do this and choke way up and try and go um, you want to work on being able to keep as much of your range as possible. Heavier spears is just going to be harder. Um, so you, do, you choke up to where it's comfortable, but you want to keep as much of your range as you can um, if you're armed. And again, if someone's fighting you, don't voluntarily give up range. If I'm shooting at Malori here and she starts moving in, I want to keep the distance as much as I can. I don't want to choke up here all the way instantly because as soon as you choke up, she now has all this range to push in. She's that much closer to me. So you want to keep the range as long as you can. But as she advances, you do have to compensate by getting shorter and shorter because you have to be still be. You can't let her get past. Once she's past, you're done. So you have to keep it here. You have to keep the spear tip in front of you. If you don't do that, then you die. Um, there's a few different ways to do that. You can simply just throw your spear back, try and grab up here as soon as you can. Um, one of the to the top stick, Sir Merrick has amazing uh, range control. You will see him primarily doing the bicycle grip the whole time, but he's so fluid in which hand is static on the pole and which hand moves that he can just change his range so quickly and so fluidly that he will rush you just as fast as a spearman rushes you and get the stats like this. Um, so you just, a lot of time you see me while I'm static on a line waiting for a fight to start as I'm just playing around with where my hands are on my spear, getting used to choking up or being farther, adjusting my range because as soon as she rushes me and I take a step back, I go back to full range. And as 
same thing here. Shorter range, shorter range, shorter range. You just want to control your range. Um, the further you can keep your opponent away from you, the less likely they are to hit you. The closer they are, the more fast you have to be on point. It kind of goes back to standing too. Um, with a spear, you never want to be in a situation where your spear is way outside of your opponent. You want to keep your spear pointed at your opponent. Um, as soon as it's out of the way, she's in there. Now, now she's past my spear point. So always, wherever you're standing, keep your spear pointed at your enemy. Um, the, it goes back to threat ranges as well. You have a much wider threat range than a sword and border does. So for all the way from here, I can hit Malori. So as long as I'm this range, my spear is pointed at her. As soon as I'm far enough away, yeah, whatever, read the battlefield. But as soon as she's in range for me to stab, my spear is pointed at her. Shots and targets. So, um, throwing shots. One thing you see people are doing, they're just stabbing. You see the my wrists are bending and going. Um, especially with pool cueing, um, if you can, start training yourself to rotate your wrist into your stab. It's more fluid. Um, it'll save your wrist a lot of overexertion and pain after a long day of fighting. Uh, it also just gives you mechanical advantage. You stab harder when you rotate your fist into your stabs. You can translate that into almost all stabs. One, it'll keep your spear straighter on where it's going because your wrist isn't changing the angle of the shaft any. It just follows the stab Whoa. as you rotate your wrist. You can do that with a single sword too. When you stab at someone, if you rotate your wrist, your point will go straighter toward where you want it. Either way, either way you rotate it. It just follows the line of the shaft when you rotate your wrist instead of trying to bend your wrist. Do you feel when you do that that this is all real tight? Um, so it's just something to practice is in you know, all your stabs. You can even do it with some of your bigger stabs. You can stab into you kind of how you're doing with your motorcycle grip. You yeah. do the same thing. And it will kind of keep your wrist from hurting. It'll keep your stab straighter. It's genius. It's fun <laughs> mechanics. Um, so when you're facing, obviously another spirit fighter can you come up here real fast. Um, a lot of times people get caught up when they're spirit fighting. They're, they're only shooting for the, the body stab. They just want that kill. Spears are fantastic at just immobilizing your opponents. Stab for legs. Act like you're stabbing high, go low, stab for legs. Get your legs out there now, no, not mobile enough for me to fight them. I can just choose my range. I have all the mobility. Limb, arm, when you arm, they have to shorten the range. They have to choke up. They now don't have as much control over their range. So I just knock out and I'm here. You just arm, leg. Um, you're more than likely going to run into other boardmen on a line. So I'll back out, take events. Mm -hmm. um, boardmen are the bane of spears, um, again, is you're almost not going to be able to get body shots unless I'm way down here fighting this person and I stab down at Malori not watching me. Um, <laughs> if you're just, stand up. you, you want to pretend, put a couple, sorry, I didn't sorry. You want to put a couple, swap place the A. You want to you put a couple shots on the shield, make sure that they're not rushing you. Hopefully you have some other linemen here that are going to keep people from wanting to just rush down your spear. Make them get used to you poking around with their shield. Feel like now they now they can't push with their team. They can't rush you. They just sit there and be sad. Or you take that if they they extend out to swing at your friend next door. Take that arm. Now they now they can't swing. Now they're just a shield. Um, spear is primarily a support weapon, and you will win the day by injuring or not injuring, wounding your opponents. Yeah, just put them out of commission. Um, no, wounding your opponents. It's, it's take take anything you can get. Legs, arms. You don't always have to get that torso stab. Um, I could go on and on into feints. Uh, a lot of spear fighters, all the, the whole feint is just a circle. But um, the best feint, in my opinion, is start a stab, get them to react, and finish the stab lower. You don't have to do 
all this. You can, you can combine them. So I can throw a stab here and finish a stab here. Um, another thing I see a lot of spear fighters doing uh, when they're throwing shots is um, resetting too far. You go stab, you come back to reset. Go stab, come back to reset. When you throw a stab, you stay at this range and you continue to poke here. Throw from here. Because one, your shots are faster. Um, and two, they don't have the chance to push up. Because like I said, as soon as I come back to reset, now they just gave up that range. So if I stay here and I'm standing here, I'm not letting my target get any closer. Um, they're having, they're either going to reset their guard, and then, oh, okay, it's over. And you get the leg because they're not guarding anymore. Um, just those little mind tactics. That works really well against other spear fighters as well. Because you'll see a lot of spear fighters, they do the big ones, the big charge. Even if they don't, they ooh, there goes my other thing. Keep both your hands on your spear. If at any reason you have a hand off your spear, you better have gotten the kill for it. Because you, you've given up all your defense, all your stability. As soon as I shoot like this, my spear now goes anywhere I want it. It takes me 10 years to get it back. That same range to be reached here. I have both my hands on my spear. Even if it gets knocked away, faster reset. If it's here, I mean, both hands on your spear at all times. In either stance, you don't have to have hand on top, hand on below. Keep both your hands on your spear. Um, I've seen many a many a spear fighter fall to getting the confident lunge and paying the price because they don't have the defense, so their spear is now out of shot. Remember, spear is always towards your enemy. If it's here, you're not convinced, come over here. If I knock my spear off the point, here. Right. Yeah. Both hands on the spear. As soon as I do this, knock my spear. Right, my spear goes anywhere I want. And it's not now it's not pointed at you. But here it's always pointed at you. Yeah. I can yeah. stab right here, it's always pointed at you. Even if you knock it around, but most it goes that far. And it's still here. And then I'm putting myself way out to make that happen. Yep, so keep both your hands on your spear. Um, anyone have any questions? Nope. Alright, that concludes Cornish's spear class. Thank you guys. Thank you, Mark.